picture that you just got done eating at a really nice restaurant with your family and you're traveling back with your family to your home. And then all of a sudden, you see this pop in your rear view mirror. Yep, the police. You start freaking out. You start thinking, oh man, do I got my driver's license? Am I wearing my seatbelt? Do I have proof of insurance? What did I do to get pulled over? Well, this scenario, get your heart pumping a little bit. I know every time I see police lights in my rear view mirror, my heart drops inside of my stomach. I don't know why, I just always do. Well, that scenario that I just gave you, that was a scenario about me. I got pulled over for going 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. Now, luckily, I got off with a verbal warning, but not everybody's that lucky. According to Hamilton, 112,338 individuals are cited with a speeding ticket every single day. And according to Borelli, the national average cost of a speeding ticket is $150. Well, if you use some easy math and you plug in that information, you can get a pretty staggering result of how much it costs every day on the American people to pay speeding tickets. That result is $16,850,700 every single day. Now, I do understand that not all tickets are paid at the end. Some get released in court and just other various situations that allow not all speed tickets to be paid. But even if you cut this number in half, we are still talking about over $8 million in fees on the American people. Now, that doesn't even cover insurance. According to these same sources, somebody that has gotten, uh, gotten a speeding ticket on average will pay $2,029 in insurance versus $1,674 of somebody that has not received a speeding ticket. I know there's different categories in insurance, but this is the national average, and so it should be close for most people. It's pretty easy to see what our problem is here. We, you plug in all these numbers into the insurance and the cost of the speeding tickets, and you can see that speeding in general costs the American people billions of dollars. Now, what we do need to understand is that money does go to good places. That money does go to employ people in different sectors according to Lancaster. This chart shows the average amount of money per speeding ticket that goes to different sectors such as EMS and the judicial branch. Now. My solution to all this is to disband some speed limits on open road environments. Obviously, an immediate benefit would be to reduce the number of speeding tickets drastically. But another hidden cost that might be reduced is the number of highway patrol that are out patrolling the roads. And why would that be a thing? Well, if there's no speed limits, in these certain roads then there's no need for them to be on the roads or as much as they are at least now that also gives another benefit to the law enforcement instead of focusing on maintaining speed limits and pulling people over that are going 10 miles per hour over the speed limit they can focus on the actual danger now i see the obvious concern here is this a safe idea well there is a road network in Germany known as the Autobahn. The Autobahn is a road that has no speeding limits. You can travel as fast as you would like. And according to Hoffelton, there are less fatalities on that road system than the U.S. highway road system. Now, granted, this may be due to stricter laws and able to get your driver's license in that country, but the principle is still the same. Now, let's look back at all this. This banning speed limits would save us a lot of money. It is safe. Now, I do, want, I do want to make it known that I don't want all speed limits to be disbanded. Speed limits are good in some areas, such as a residential area. But I would like all listeners to consider the benefits of disbanding 
speed limits in open road environments and maybe even considering the possibility of getting stricter rules in order to obtain license so everybody stays safe and Americans save money. Thank you.